Hello, BookTube. I confess I now have a kind of macabre curiosity to see if I can get a book haul done in anything less than 30 minutes. <laughs> and the way that I figured out how to do this, we occasionally have done this on this channel, we're going to do just one book. <laughs> we're going to see if that works. One package. <laughs> we're going to see if we can get this mail haul done in, let's say, 10 minutes. <laughs> and if need be, I'll just do a separate mail haul on every individual package that I get. <laughs> Uh, so let's see what this one is. Let's see how much we can figure out. How much there is to say or think about for one book. Uh, it's not the only thing I'll get today, I'm sure. There'll be plenty more. Uh, of course, my assistant doesn't care how many books there are. She's perfectly happy to destroy anything. Oh. <laughs> she's, not, she's not particularly willing to jump because... Uh, She's. I'm. I'm starting to learn. In the last two years, I'm learning her rhythms, and she likes her, her midday nap <laughs> very much. <laughs> and she's. She's starting to sort of drift down to her midday nap. Uh, so what have we got here? What have we got here? It's a novel. Okay. Uh, it's a novel that I. I did not request from the folks at Flatiron Books. They do great books. They do fantastic books. Uh. And it's a debut. Okay, good. Okay, so this is a debut novel by Reed King called uh, <laughs> called FKA USA. FKA USA. The inside of the uh, the review copy, I don't know what will, how this will work in the finished book, has a map of uh, of the United States. Uh, only it looks like a very altered United States. Uh, so what what is this? Uh, I don't know this at all. FKA USA. Uh, 2085. 2085. In the wake of environmental disasters and the catastrophic policies of its final president, the United States has dissolved into 26 separate territories. And the future of humanity rests in the hands of one young man and a talking goat. <laughs> so begins Reed King's wildly imaginative, eerily prescient debut, FKA USA which comes out in late June. Truckee Wallace lives in Crunchtown 407, formerly known as Little Rock, Arkansas, a factory town where he's employed to pull a hand crank approximately 3,267 times a day on an assembly line that produces a staple of the continental diet, flavor blast cheese dust. Uh, he has no grand ambitions in life, except for maybe getting a better VR visor or losing his virginity someday. <laughs> I wonder if Trucky is young. Uh, that is, until a mysterious talking goat shows up at the factory. Suddenly, he is tapped by the president for a sensitive political mission to deliver the goat across the continent. Trucky and the goat, who is called Barnaby, <laughs> set out across a barren wasteland that was formerly known as the USA. Along the way, they pick up an android who yearns to be human and a former uh, convict lobotomized in Texas. Together, they navigate an environmentally depleted and lawless continent populated by Elvis worshippers, outlaws who crisscross the continent in underground tunnels, body subbers, and VR addicts. Uh, when it's the end of the world, how can you know who to trust and whether there's anything left worth saving? Richly imagined, laugh-out-loud funny, and despairingly satirical, FKA USA is the epic road trip novel of the future. <laughs> King's ambitious, audacious debut sits alongside Douglas Adams' A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, come now. <laughs> oh, come now. How many times do I have to say this to pub sheet writers? You're not doing your author any favors to do that. <laughs> uh, and also, Ernest Cline's Ready Player One, which is mentioned here on the, on the front as a masterful conjuring of the future that reflects who we are today. Okay. Uh, okay, so who is who is Reed King when he's at home? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, do we know anything about the author? Are we going to be told anything about, anything about Reed King? I want to know uh, exactly when he went to uh, whatever MFA program he went to. But there's no information about him at all in here. That's kind of strange. Uh, Oh, God. On the inside, uh, we get the same boilerplate, uh, uh, but that the final paragraph isn't just The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It gets even worse. On the inside, it's something of a cross between L. Frank Baum's The Wizard of Oz 
Douglas Adams' is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Cormac McCarthy's The Road, and Ernest uh, Klein's Ready Player One. This is the epic novel we've all been waiting for about America and end times. Uh, as a couple more. Oh, okay, here we go. Reed King is the pseudonym of a New York Times bestselling author and TV writer. <laughs> Whenever something like that happens, the most famous example in American letters being Primary Colors, which was a, a Clinton-era political novel that was a runaway bestseller and was initially anonymous. And whenever this sort of thing happens, I I am torn between wanting to email the publicist, in this case I know the publicist well, I've been dealing with her for years, and ask who uh, Reed King really is, or the much larger impulse of reading the book and trying to figure it out on my own. I uh, didn't, I, I did the latter with Primary Colors because I wasn't, I wasn't in the reviewing world when it came out, so I didn't have access to its publicist. And I was 100% sure that when I read the thing, if I read it closely, and I did, uh, I would be able to figure out who the the political operative was who wrote it. Uh, and I made a guess, and I talked about it with all of my customers, and I was dead wrong. <laughs> and, and they didn't let me forget that either. <laughs> uh, but I'm, now I'm tempted to do it all over again. Uh, because Reed King, this is a big novel, and, and it's, a, it's a fiction debut. Mm, okay. Uh, well, anyway, uh, let's let's see what uh, what page one hundred and twelve has to offer. I am now really curious. Uh, the the page one hundred and twelve tag, an all purpose tag. I urge you all to do, especially if you're new to book two and you don't know quite what to do. Uh, Sean, the book maniac, uh, made a book tag called the page one hundred and twelve tag. Uh, adapted from a French literary prize in which the judges are given only page 112 of the works under consideration, not the author, not the title, not anything else, just that, figuring that the first two or three dozen pages will be heavily airbrushed and and worked over by everybody involved with the book, but that by page 112, you're getting a sense of what the book is really like after all those caring hands have lost interest. Uh, and uh, the the trick of a page 112 tag is it's a lot of fun, and it's actually an excellent informal uh, exercise in literary criticism. In, in a, Not literary criticism in the stupid academic sense of the word, but literary criticism in the sense of what? Of analytical reading. Because you have to you have to hunker down on that one page and see what's going on. So let's let's see what page one hundred and twelve is like here at FKA USA. Uh, some days it was hard to think of a reason to go on. There were mornings when the whole nine yards of it, standing, pissing the bladder of urine, scrubbing the rot from the back of your teeth, covering the stink of your underarms, seemed about as useful as putting makeup on a corpse. And there's a footnote. <laughs> this is a footnoted novel. The footnote says, Truckee is referring to the Carnival Moribundi cult, actually one of the largest and most pervasive religious organizations at the time. I guess they put lipstick on corpses in the Carnival Moribundi cult. Uh, we were all dying. The planet was dying. The party was over. Soon the Earth would go back to the roaches and skeeters, all the species that had found a way to survive without ever once inventing online porno or plastic zip ties. Yeah... There were days it was hard to get up in the morning, especially when your morning started on your back in the hard dirt with an android poking you hard in the breastbone and doing terrible vocals over the Crunch Town Crunk copyright. <laughs> Don't do that, I said. Ever again. Promise me. Good morning, Sammy said. How did you sleep? Fantastic. It was barely dawn. My grill tasted like the inside of a garbage compactor. Meanwhile, Barnaby had slept in a wagon on the border of an old cotton coop. When I spotted him, he was flat on his back getting a belly rub from Nikhil and B. Okay, that is the first, that is page 112 of the book. It's got a lot of weaknesses. I think you'll you'll probably agree with me. Um, the whole nine yards of it, whole nine yards is an idiom. Unlikely that it would still apply in 2085 America, or that someone who was obviously young in 2085 would ever have heard of it, much less use it. Uh, uh, covering the stink of your underarms. Are we, are we being told that in post-apocalyptic America there's underarm deodorant? Uh, the party was over is another idiom. There are a couple of other idioms, too, here. Uh, and the... Uh, yeah, the, referring to his teeth as my grill. 
that's outdated now. So I don't think it would still be around in two thousand in two thousand eighty five. Uh, it's 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 got a slangy kind of readability to it, but I'm not sure I'm not sure it would get on my nerves over hundred over hundreds of pages. Uh, yeah, this is almost five hundred pages long. But uh, a big part of a book like this, uh, I should be showing it to you, shouldn't I? A big part of a book like this will be the ongoing inventiveness, not the line quality. So I'm um, I'm okay with I'm okay with the writing being a trifle on the sloppy side. I wish it weren't. Uh, but the more idioms there are and the more slangy and casual the writing is, the more likely it will be that I can identify the author. <laughs> if someone is, is cleaning their prose to, to sound professional and literary, then they're going to sound like a whole bunch of different people. If they're talking, if they're writing the way they talk, that'll be easier. <laughs> but anyway, this one, that's fascinating. All right, so this comes out in June. Uh, a debut from a pseudonym... Uh, pseudonym uh, about a, a post-apocalyptic America. Uh, let's take a look at this map. I'm sure that the yeah okay yeah the uh, all of all of the New England coast is completely different. And you see down there at the bottom, Florida is an island. <laughs> it's no longer an isthmus. Okay. All right. Well, great. Uh, so this this uh, comes out in June. I, I this is interesting enough for me. It's weird for me to think uh, that I have lots of people watching me right now who are going to be alive in 2085. That is weird to think, and yet it's true. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't envy you. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, but anyway, there you go. That wasn't under 10 minutes, but that was a relatively short book haul. Of course, it's only one, <laughs> one book. <laughs> uh, but we'll do better. We'll do better next time. <laughs> Thank you, book two.